Are you the person in your company who cleans up the messes left behind by your boss? Like you explain him to everyone when he's mysterious or smooth over her feelings when she's been a jerk? If so, you're probably a toxic handler, a job likely handed to you without having been asked and one you should shed as soon as humanly possible. Okay, let's step back for a second. Toxic handlers were first formally identified in a 1999 Harvard Business Review article by two respected Canadian business academics, Sandra Robinson and the late Peter Frost. In their article, Frost and Robinson did a brilliant job describing the heroics that toxic handlers often perform to keep their teams functioning. Usually these individuals are close in stature to the boss, a second in command, so to speak. And in that role, they manage to do their own jobs, plus spend an inordinate amount of time putting out the fires their boss has started. Call it their unhealthy full-time side hustle. Does this scenario sound familiar to you? I wouldn't be surprised because after that HBR article was published, I was an editor at the magazine at the time, you cannot believe the amount of feedback we got. Email after email saying, this is me, or more commonly, this was me. Was because 99% of the time, being a toxic handler is a dead end gig. First of all, it's emotionally draining, but just as important, in time, most jerk bosses do get fired and their toxic handlers are usually the collateral damage that goes out the door with them. Look, you know, there's no shame in being a toxic handler. It's a role usually imposed on the nicest people in an organization. But if it's been given to you, give it back, even if you have to go to HR. Sure, your toxic boss may not be happy. He needs you to survive. But if you want to survive, you have to let him clean up that mess himself.